In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install the new technical preview for reporting services to get Power BI reports up and running on premises. And we're going to take a look at Power BI desktop and how that fits in. That's coming up. What's up, guys? I'm Adam Saxon, aka Guy in a Cube. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are going to look at how to get to this. That is a Power BI report running inside of the new technical preview for reporting services. We're going to look at how to install it, how to configure it, and what we need to do with Power BI Desktop in order to get these Power BI reports working. So to start off, you need to go download the bits for the installer. You can do that by heading over to the Microsoft Download Center. I've got a link down in the description below. And there you can download SQL Server reporting services.exe along with the version of Power BI Desktop that goes along with this version of reporting services. We will come back and talk about Power BI Desktop. Just know that you will have to download this version of it even if you have it installed for the Power BI service. Once you have the bits downloaded, you're going to want to run SQL Server reporting services.exe. This will launch the new standalone setup experience. We are detached from the big SQL Server install. You can select options down below to change the path of where the files will be installed to. For this video, we're just going to go with the default and then we're going to accept the license agreement and go ahead and actually install it. On my machine, this took maybe a minute, minute and a half to actually lay down the bits. It will do some initial configuration for the actual website of this. And when you're done, you'll see an option to launch SQL Server Reporting Services Configuration Manager. Once you launch the Reporting Services Configuration Manager, we need to set up a database to house the catalog items, the actual report server database that's needed for this instance to run. You will need to have a SQL Server available in your environment. If you installed it locally, you can just go right to the database tab and set it up. If you're installing on a remote SQL Server, in my experience, I had to change it off of the virtual service account and I just set it to the network service account. You can do that by going to the service account tab and changing the actual service account. Once I did that on my machine, I could go to the database tab, change database, and actually set up a new report server database. Once that's done, reporting services is configured and up and running. It doesn't take very long to do that. The other thing I had to do on my report server machine because I have the Windows firewall installed is I just added a rule to let port 80 traffic through the firewall. If you've enabled SSL, you'll want to open up 443. Once that's done, I just go to my client machine, open up the browser, and go to the machine name slash reports. In my case, it was Cube RS slash reports. And then the web portal will come up. You'll notice there's nothing there because I haven't uploaded anything yet, but we're going to do that next. So let's talk about Power BI Desktop. There is a specific version of Power BI Desktop you need to use with reporting services. This is available to download on the same download page that we downloaded the report server bits from. So be sure that you get the version that matches with your platform, either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. Once you've downloaded and installed that, it can be installed side-by-side -side with the Power BI Desktop version for the Power BI service. You'll notice here I've got both of them installed. One of them says Power BI Desktop and in parentheses SQL Server Reporting Services. The other one just says Power BI Desktop. When you launch that, the launch dialog will also include SQL Server reporting services in it. And once Power BI Desktop is up and running in the title bar, you will also see SQL Server reporting services in the title bar. That's how you can validate that you're using the right version of Power BI Desktop. Okay, for the initial preview of this release of reporting services, the only data source that's available to us right now is a live connection to analysis services that can be tabular or multi bleh, either connecting to a tabular instance or a multidimensional instance. So we'll have to create that as our data source. Once we've connected to that, we can create a report like we normally do in Power BI Desktop and go ahead and save that somewhere. Right now within Power BI Desktop, you cannot save it directly to the report server or publish to it from Power BI Desktop as well. So we'll have to save it locally and then we can go to the web portal for reporting services and click the upload button once we get to the folder that we want, select that PBIX file and then it resides on the report server. If your analysis services is local to the reporting services server, you don't have to do any additional configuration. You can just run that file, everything will work out great. If your analysis services is remote and it's not on the same machine as reporting services, you may have additional configuration to do from a Kerberos perspective. I'm going to talk about that next week. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. 
For our purposes right now, I can just go ahead and run that report directly in the web portal and you will see the report come up, the Power BI report rendered inside of the web portal and I can interact with that if I want. Another cool thing is inside of Power BI Desktop, you can go to File, Open, and point to a SQL Server Reporting Services instance. You can select the report that you have deployed already to the report server and open that up. Any modifications you do at this point when you save that get saved directly back to the report server. So if I make those changes, save it, go back to the web portal, rerun the report, I will see those changes reflected. Okay, my question for today is, have you actually downloaded and installed the technical preview? Have you run into any problems? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.